Oh, everyone yeah. rolling? Yes. Yeah, yeah. rolling. Okay, um, it's been a uh, very sad and tragic start to the uh, last one weekend again this year. Um, tragically, right across our state, uh, from the far north to the Riverlands and to the Limestone Coast, uh, there have been three lives lost already this weekend and in crashes that have occurred on our roads and, and on private property. I can't begin to imagine the heartbreak that at least four families are now experiencing as a result of these crashes this weekend, some of which we would say uh, were preventable. Uh, I spoke on Thursday ahead of this weekend imploring people to uh, do the right thing, to be safe on our roads, and, and uh, it appears from our initial investigations that some of the things that contribute to fatalities or lives lost in our road and serious injury crashes, the photo five, uh, are elements of, of why people have lost their lives on, on our roads uh, already this weekend. It started just after midday in the far north uh, near Wurramina, which is about 30 kilometres west of Kimber. There was a big double crash uh, with a uh, A 23-year-old man who was driving the ute uh, was killed on the scene, as was a 40, sorry, a 57-year-old woman who uh, was a passenger in the truck. Um, if you've seen the pictures of that crash, it's absolutely horrific. Uh, both vehicles were incinerated. Uh, the road damage is, um, is uh, almost catastrophic in some way over a culvert. Uh, and the 49-year-old uh, uh, truck driver uh, was out to Adelaide, where I understand is undergoing surgery this morning for extensive burns. Uh, shortly around, sorry, Around 6 p.m. Uh, last night in the Riverland, a major crash investigators and local police were called to a private property near Morgan, where a vehicle uh, had rolled, injecting one of the passengers uh, who died at the scene. Uh, there were three other people uh, in that vehicle uh, who have sustained minor injuries and have been treated at various hospitals around the state, uh, both uh, locally here and also in the Riverland. And then lastly, just before uh, 6 p.m. last night in the southeast, a, uh, a male was riding a motorcycle, a um, 63 year old man who sustained serious head injuries uh, and is also um, in a life threatening condition uh, as a result of a crash uh, in that uh, down the southeast area. Some of the things we spoke about um, on Thursday, imploring people to do the right thing this weekend. Uh, relates around to uh, the photo five. Um, we understand from our initial investigations in relation to the Morgan incident uh, that the passenger uh, whose life has been lost uh, was not wearing a seatbelt. Uh, major crash investigators are also determining what other factors are at play, whether speed or alcohol or drugs were also factors uh, in that crash. In relation to the crash in the far north, um, our investigations will obviously focus on um, whether fatigue uh, or whether intention was a factor in that crash, it is too early to tell uh, what the actual causes of these crashes are, but clearly, given the vast distances in that part of the state, uh, I'm sure that will form part of the focus of our investigation. And finally, in the southeast, uh, a simple thing such as wearing a helmet uh, whilst you're riding a motorcycle can potentially save your life. And we understand from the initial investigation the 63-year-old in the southeast who now has uh, life-threatening injuries was not wearing a motorcycle helmet whilst wearing his motorcycle. Now we've still got a little way to go this weekend and there's plenty of traffic on the roads uh, both in our regions and also in the metropolitan area. I would absolutely implore people, please be careful on our roads. Um, if you are travelling back to Adelaide um, from the regions, uh, even if you're travelling short distances, we want everybody to make it safe and make it home safe uh, this long weekend. Um, even just take that extra bit of caution this weekend, plan an extra half hour, an hour on your trip if you can. And whilst you're driving our regional roads in particular, don't be selfish. You know, if you're running late, um, if you have got distractions happening in the car, if you're starting to feel tired, stop and rest. If you're running late, don't take risks on our roads. There's probably other drivers around you who are equally wanting to get home. But please, uh, don't be selfish, do the right thing, drive safely, and uh, let's make sure that everybody, everybody on our roads this weekend gets home safely. The crash in the States uh, far north, um, what was the truck carrying that that 
was that flammable? What was in the, in, in the truck? And did that sort of exacerbate the situation? Uh, so my understanding is the boot double that was involved in the far north was not carrying any flammable or um, other materials. So I understand it was uh, either a grain truck or a gravel truck. Um, it was uh, the site of the accident, uh, sorry, the site of the crash um, is on a culvert or a, a bridge uh, which allows uh, flood waters to flow through uh, during the wet season. Uh, and if you've seen the photos of that, there's extensive damage to that road, which remains close to the time being. Um, I'm not um, privy as to how long the road closure will still be in place uh, because of the damage involved. It will take some time to make an assessment and then actually fix the damage. Um, one thing I do want to say to um, other travellers who are in the far north is that there are diversions in place uh, around the far north region. And if you haven't done much travelling around the far north region, not every road is suitable for every vehicle type. So please uh, make sure you do your research in terms of understanding whether your vehicle is a suitable vehicle to use um, these diversions. Uh, there is a phone uh, number available on uh, the SOPOL website and Facebook uh, page. And you can also check the Department for Infrastructure and Transport uh, website in relation to the latest information about road closures and suitability for certain vehicles. The last thing we want is for, for someone to um, take a road or take a diversion where the vehicle is clearly not suitable and end up in a similar situation to some of these other people today, and, and over the weekend. This um, final crash, can you? I guess, can we go over exactly how the crash occurred? Were the two vehicles travelling in the same direction? Was it a head-on clash? And, and essentially, from the preliminary investigations, do we know, you know who hit who? But can you talk me through the, the, the crash? Yeah, sure. My understanding is just that um, uh, the vehicles were travelling in opposite directions. Uh, they were on a culvert or a bridge, uh, like I said, which is over a floodway. Um, it's too early to tell as to um, what actually happened as part of this crash. Um, the scene itself is extensive and there's debris and um, there's carnage all over the road essentially. Uh, so it's going to take some time uh, to piece together what's actually happened there. Regardless, um, you know, we've got uh, two people who've lost their lives at the scene. We've got another, another person, the driver of the truck, who's got extensive injuries uh, and they're life changing. You know, there are, there are, like I said before, there are at least four families out there, and probably more this weekend, who have got now got life-changing circumstances because of lives lost in our roads and from serious injuries, hopefully most of which could actually be preventable. You know, we talk about fatigue, we talk about resting, whether that was a fact or not, I'm not sure. Um, but, you know, on our state's roads and our, and our, um, like said, our roads in the far north, there are vast distances there, so it is really important to take regular rest breaks every two hours Get out of the car for 15 minutes. Make sure you refresh before you before you head off again. Um, that roadway, you uh, South Australian Police has tweeted a photo. It looks like underneath the roadway is red. Is that? Can you confirm? Is that fire? Is, are they embers? Is that sort of the heat that's been generated? Can you talk us through that photo and what we said? Uh, look, I'm not sure exactly uh, what the cause of the actual colours uh, on the roadway underneath is. Um, clearly, um, uh, there was a, a significant fire for both vehicles there, covering quite a large area. Um, I don't think it was as a result of any chemicals or anything else like that, or no, no, no um, flammable materials used. So whether it's the um, the material that um, any, any fire appliances or others have used, or whether it is just simply that those fires have been out, that's somewhat short of this. Is this Go. one of the worst crashes you've seen? It's up there in, in terms of the uh, the amount of carnage that's on the road up there. Um, like I said, if you've seen the photographs of the road and the vehicles and, and the like, it is uh, something that um, even though I guess the truck driver was likely to walk away from, um, it is just absolutely unbelievable the damage that's been caused uh, in that particular crash as well. That particular area about two months ago experienced heavy, heavy rainfall, extensive flooding, a number of roads were actually damaged in that recent flood event. Was that bridge already damaged by flood? Because how can a fire with a truck actually cause that much damage to a roadway? Was it actually already damaged? Was it, have you guys spoken to Dipti and asked for a road assessment on that particular bridge? Uh, so I'm unaware of any information in relation to any damage caused to uh, that road, that particular section of the road, or any other roads. Um, it's a really important point, though, in terms of uh, the other roads, the, the uh, diversions in place, because there has been a lot of uh, wet weather in the far north region uh, over the last few months, which uh, people from Adelaide and other areas particularly not be aware of. That's why it's really important to check the 
uh, for infrastructure and transport website about the suitability of roads and the vehicles to be used. Uh, and in terms of the actual uh, the culvert or the bridge uh, where these crash locations occurred, look, I'm sure that um, the Department of Infrastructure and Transport uh, are already conducting an investigation in terms of uh, what needs to be done to uh, to repair the road in the first instance and return uh, obviously the traffic flows to normal. So uh, that we may have them to look at. Was the material that the culverts were made out of? Um, did that play a part in, I guess, the the, the road structure? Um, uh, well, I, I'm no engineer, um, but um, you know, when you've got a, uh, I guess, a fire of such intensity associated with a large vehicle and also a, a secondary vehicle, um, it's going to cause uh, some damage. But what, what damage it causes to road services? And I was, uh, like I said, I'm not an engineer, so I'll leave that to, uh, to transport that to comment on that. The 23 year old man was in the ACT. Have you, have you contacted his family? Have you spoken to them informally? So I understand that uh, contact with family members uh, is occurring and has occurred in some instances. Um, I come back to my point before um, there's these families' lives and how we change forever. You know, a 23 year old uh, person um, gone. Um, you know, and there's going, to be, there's going to be daily and yearly reminders of I mean, I, my heart goes out for these families tonight when they see this on the news. My heart goes out to these families in 12 months' time when they come around to the march long weekend as a reminder that you know, that's when they lost their loved one or the, you know, the, the lifelong care in, in, in cases where people have got serious injuries. Is that uh, going to be that yearly reminder um, where if only um, they had um, done something to make themselves safe on the road. And you know, I, I don't presume for a second to, um, to say that. Uh, that those whose lives have been lost are necessarily responsible in every case. And tragically, in a lot of cases, uh, people who lose their lives on their road just through no fault of their own. Uh, it is because other people have taken unnecessary risks, even if just for a second, um, which has resulted in, uh, in the tragic loss of uh, three lives so far this, week, uh, this weekend. Is there any clearer message to motorists um, to drive safe this long weekend than, than, than these crashes overnight? How can you make it clearer to people? Yeah, that's, that's a really good question. Um, you know, we, we keep pushing messages out. Um, we have uh, got significant amount of police resources, particularly in our regional areas, but also uh, on our metropolitan roads, uh, conducting random breath testing, drug testing, uh, and making sure that people are doing the right thing. But ultimately, you know, we can't be there um, everywhere all the time. It is up to everybody. Um, road safety is everybody's responsibility. Uh, but simple things uh, for people who are in the regions in particular, either travelling between regions or perhaps coming home, the main message is, uh, from our perspective is um, please plan your trip well ahead. Um, if you plan well ahead, then you can factor in rest breaks, uh, you can factor in delays for whatever reason, and it just takes the pressure off uh, when you're driving home so you don't have to take risks. You know, if you put yourself in a position where you have to be somewhere in a certain time and you start falling behind, we all know circumstances where you know, people have taken risks or we've seen other drivers you know, overtake when it's been dangerous to do so or perhaps try and push through an overtaking lane on our regional roads when really um, you know, all you need to do is to sit back and perhaps wait for the next overtaking opportunity which is safe rather than actually putting your life, um, the passengers in your car and other road users uh, uh, at risk. And this is where I say you know, share the road. You know, just, be, just be courteous to other road users. Don't be selfish in those circumstances because if there is large volumes of traffic on the road, Everyone's going to be, you know, wanting to get home. Everyone's going to be feeling like a delay. Don't be the one to take the risk, which either um, ends up killing you, you know, members of your family, or somebody else on the road. This must have been an incredibly confronting scene for um, your colleagues and, and uh, in all emergency services. Um, can you explain to us the sort of situation that they would have been confronted with at this crash in the far north? What did they run to? Yeah, look, it's not just the crash in the far north, it's, a, it's a, every crash um, that's occurred on this weekend. Um, in, in a lot of circumstances, particularly in regional areas, we've got volunteers um, going out uh, to help um, the police officers and, and, and other emergency services that perhaps are flying from Adelaide via Medivacs and that. These are um, people who have um, everyday jobs in their communities who are sometimes rolling out to a, to a crash where even their local people have been killed. In some instances, you know, these. Uh, volunteers have been responding and actually known uh, the people who are um, passed or have been seriously injured. It has a horrendous effect uh, on, on people, uh, on communities more broadly, particularly in the regions. Um, and even and also for our police, you know, the last thing um, I want any of our police officers to be exposed to is the, is the trauma that you see 
in crashes where vehicles are incinerated, where someone's uh, got severe head injuries after crashing the motorcycle, not wearing a helmet, um, just purely going to a, a crash where you've got a 23 year old lad um, ejected from a vehicle for not wearing a seatbelt. And now there's three other people in that vehicle, including the driver, um, all of which suffered minor injuries. And you just have to ask yourself why. You know, if you just took that one step um, and put a seatbelt on, would the outcome have been different? You know, it's too early in investigation to tell any circumstances, but um, the heartbreak that these, that these families um, would be experiencing now, um, I can't begin to comprehend myself and hope I never have to. Um, that's the reason, I guess, why I just implore people. What, what you do on the road, um, the risks you take on the road, will stay with you for the rest of your life. So please be responsible. Do the right thing on the road. Um, share the road. Don't be selfish. And make sure you get you and your family and anybody else who's you know enjoying our state this weekend get them home safe. Last question. Just going back to that southeast crash with the motorcyclist. Sorry, I'm not across that one. What happened there last night? Was it? So it's just before six pm last night. Um, there's a media release on our website. Yeah, sorry, I haven't seen it. That's okay. Um, there's a uh, at uh, Congarong in the southeast, uh, which is southwest of Mount Gambia. At about 5.50 last night, a 63 year old local man uh, sustained serious head injuries as a result of a, uh, a crash uh, on a road related area. So uh, that's still under investigation. I'm, I'm not sure. My, my yeah, was he like on a dirt bike, on a dirt track, or was he on a road as such? Yeah, my understanding is on a road related area, which generally means it could be a, a, a track that parallels a road or could be um, right on a, a next to a road. So there's a there are some nuances to that. I guess the, the main message is here is um, what would the outcome be like if this person had simply put on a helmet uh, whilst they're riding on bike? Just confirming with the phone off, is it a B double? Or does it, how many trailers did it have? So my, my understanding is it's a B double that was involved in the, in the crash, along with the utility. Okay, thank you.